It's Thursday, March 18. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Carol Francis. There have reportedly been an overwhelming number of calls placed at the Ministry of Health, National Senior Councils and other entities from Jamaicans wanting to register to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. As the Minister of Health and Wellness responds to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton, signed a contract on Thursday, March 18, with ITEL BPO. ITEL BPO, a provider of contact center management services, is being engaged to provide call-in assistance for those who require help with registration for their COVID-19 vaccination appointments. So earlier this week, we, we, we signed the agreement with UNICEF, read a software platform which will allow persons to register online and to provide information, two-way information, so that clarity can be brought to the, to the appointment process and the follow-up process. And so that is in train and in another few weeks, week or so, you will see that up and running and persons who are techn technologically savvy can access the appointment process through that means, no matter where in Jamaica you are. Today, we are adding to that by developing or officially signing, I should say, the arrangements with ITEL BPO, where ITEL BPO now will be the other leg of the process of setting appointments by calling a, a, a line, a toll free line, 888 uh, One Love. So we are moving then to expand the various ways in which members of the public, based on the phased implementation, now is the time, it wasn't before now, it is now, will be able to register and book an appointment to be inoculated at a convenient site across the country. The ministry is moving toward the implementation of the comprehensive vaccine administration platform, where in very short order, persons will be able to make appointments and know when they will be able to receive their vaccination, which is key. The vaccination management system is expected to be launched next week. Those judged to be most at risk from COVID-19 are being vaccinated first. Time now for the Health and Wellness Ministry's latest COVID-19 clinical management summary. In the summary for Wednesday, March 17, 2021, four new COVID-19 related deaths were recorded. This moves the island's death toll to 511. 638 new COVID-19 cases were also reported. Of the 33,366 overall case count, 17,004 are active. Here is the parish breakdown. Kingston and St. Andrew reported 246 cases, St. Catherine 177, and St. Thomas 42. Jamaica returned 39 positives, Westmoreland 30, Manchester 22, Clarendon 17, St. Anne 16, and St. Mary 14. Over in St. Elizabeth and Portland, there were 13 cases, Hanover had 6, and Trelawney 3. On the other end, 142 recoveries were announced by the health authorities over the last 24 hours. That tally has been pushed to 15,615. At this time, 398 persons are hospitalized with 28 patients showing moderate symptoms and 34 patients in a critical state. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Gabrielle Thompson. The World Health Organization's technical lead, Maria Van Kerkhov, says the WHO has only approved safe vaccines. The assurance was given in response to concerns expressed about the time it has taken to develop the COVID-19 vaccines and their efficacy during a virtual question and answer session. There are many, many clinical trials that are underway um, before they are licensed, before they are used in populations. And that's really important because people have heard a lot about, you know, these vaccines are developed so fast and so rapidly, um, but safety is not skipped ever, you know, so all of those clinical trials are, have, are, are underway and there are many vaccines that are still in clinical trials. Um, but the ones that are in use have been approved because they have passed these safety, uh, safety and efficacy. Um, and what we do is when these uh, vaccines are rolled out, people are monitored. Dr. Kirkov explained that some countries have paused their vaccination programs. 
and some countries have, have in a precautionary approach, have, have paused the use of AstraZeneca. Um, but the group of SAGE, uh, the group of WHO, and the group of the uh, many different groups have been looking at the studies, and this is a normal practice. Whenever there is a signal of something or a potential signal, um, it doesn't mean that there's an association, but they have to look and they have to do a, a proper um, study to evaluate whether or not it's associated with the use of the vaccine. Assistant Director General for Emergency Preparedness and Response, Dr. Mike Ryan, is urging everyone to get vaccinated. A vaccination is the single most uh, effective health intervention ever devised in, 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 in healthcare delivery. Uh, vaccines have saved millions of lives. Uh, but vaccines are biologic products and we have to use them carefully and safely and as Maria said, uh, these, these products have been proven to be safe. But when you start to use vaccines at large scale, uh, problems that were potentially very rare can, can crop up and that's why we have this post-distribution uh, enhanced surveillance and in fact we've been watching very carefully for anything that may that may go wrong. Um, uh, so l let's wait and let's see. Uh, we would uh, advise people to keep taking the vaccines. Right now, this virus has a much bigger chance of uh, doing you a lot of harm than the very, very potentially tiny risks associated with, uh, with, uh, with this vaccine. The WHO has published an official statement about the benefits of AstraZeneca vaccines. The WHO notes that the benefits outweigh the risks and recommends its continued use. In 2005, Jamaica ratified the World Health Organization's Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. In 2013, the island implemented the Public Health Tobacco Control Regulations, which call for, among other things, smoke-free public and workspaces. However, there is still prevalent tobacco and nicotine use in the country. Smokers are particularly vulnerable to COVID-19, which affects the respiratory system. A joint parliamentary select committee is now considering legislation aimed at tobacco control. Legal consultant in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Albert Edwards, outlined the provisions of the bill when the committee sat on Wednesday. Tobacco control, what it is. The bill defines in clause two tobacco control, a range of supply, demand, and harm reduction strategies to improve the health of the population by eliminating or reducing the consumption of tobacco products, etc. This puts the structure of the approach to tobacco control in context. Basically, one seeks to control demand on one hand, so there are measures relating to controlling demand of persons for tobacco. And in relation to those, we will see price policies, provisions relating to management of premises, etc. And then there's a supply side, which deals with trade aspects and also control of access by children, by young persons. So supply, demand, and then harm reduction, which is a particularly new element that we'll see in the tobacco control bill. The bill seeks to give effect to the WHO Convention on Tobacco Control. Now what we have done is looked at the main themes of the convention because the bill is intended to give effect to the convention. So the main themes are price and tax control. This is not going at this point included in the bill before us today, but there are provisions in other pieces of legislation, as I think many of us would know, that deal with price strategies in relation to tobacco products. Prevention policy. Now, non-price measures. So the tax and price measures are the price measures to reduce demand. We have in the bill significant provisions in relation to non-price measures. Traffic congestion is inescapable in growing areas across the world. In Jamaica, the situation is evident in a number of areas, including Portmore in St. Catherine. Motorists entering and leaving Portmore via Mandela Highway 
have been facing lengthy delays due to traffic congestion. They will soon get some ease. Minister Without Portfolio and the Minister of Economic Growth and Job Creation with Responsibility for Works, Everett Warmington, says at least two options are being considered to address the issue. Marlon Samuels has the details. One of the main reasons traffic congestion is increasing is population growth. More people means more vehicles. As the Portmore community continues to grow, so too the percentage of motorists using private motor vehicles. Motorists entering and leaving Portmore using Mandala Highway are faced with lengthy delays during rush hour. While it's impossible to eliminate congestion, there are several ways to reduce it. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation with Responsibility for Works, Everell Warmington, is reportedly mulling over a number of solutions. One option is the construction of a bridge at the entrance to the toll road at Mandela Highway in the vicinity of Aki Village. Another is to place on and off ramps constructed at the Grange Lane Bridge. Ivan Anderson, Managing Director at the National Road Operating and Constructing Company, NROCC, told GIS News that additional access to the highway will be created. This to facilitate the numerous housing developments being undertaken between Kinston and just outside of Spanish Town. For the time being, motorists stuck in traffic should relax, listen to some music or the radio to catch up on news stories they might have missed. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Marlon Samuels. Mayor of Kingston, Senator Delroy Williams, says that although 180 roads have been fixed in the last financial year, more must be done to improve the road network. I think that's good going as a council. We did check some of those streets after the heavy rains late last year and just to see how, how, they, how they were standing up and... I must say that most of the streets that we checked, we would have done some random checking, and most of them were, were, were intact. Didn't show any sign of damage from the heavy rains. Mayor Williams is urging all councillors to ensure the road repairs are done to correct standards. I know it has been a conversation in the public space about the, the quality of the repair works and the financing to attend to attain the quality that we want to. So far, I think we have reached a, a, a level, a standard that is acceptable, but I believe that we still can push beyond that. Pushing beyond that is a cost issue, but I believe that is something that we cannot give up on. We have to continue to push, because at the end of the day, we have to bring, we have to ensure that we have a general improvement in the roadway across the municipality. That is very important to us. Because I would say over many years, we have been having a general decline in the condition of our roadways. Motorists will pay more at the pumps this week for gas and diesel oil. We get these and other market details in this business report with Gabriel Thompson. According to the latest ex-refinery costs from state-owned oil refinery Petrojam, motorists should see an increase at the pumps in the prices of gasoline and diesel, effective Thursday, March 18. Following an increase of $2.94 each, 87 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $138.50 at $141.33 per litre respectively. Automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $130.56 per litre, following an increase of $0.38, cents, while ultra-low sulfur diesel is up by $0.56 cents and will be sold for $134.96 per litre. Meanwhile, kerosene saw a price increase of $0.30 cents and will be sold for $104.84 per litre. Propane liquid petroleum will be sold for $55.98 per litre, down by $3.00 and butane liquid petroleum will be sold for $56.56 .56 per litre after a decrease of $2.19.
Expect price changes as marketing companies and retailers will add their respective markup to these prices. In Wednesday's trading session, the JSE combined index declined by 2,193 points to close at under 400,000 units. Overall, market activity resulted from trading in 86 stocks, of which 33 advanced, 39 declined, and 14 traded firm. The junior market index advanced by 11 points to close at under 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for AMG Packaging and Paper Company, Caribbean Assurance Brokers Limited, and Caribbean Producers Jamaica Limited. Stocks declined for 138 Student Living Jamaica, 1834 Investments Limited, and Barita Investments Limited. Trading firm were Berger Paints Jamaica Community and Workers of Jamaica Deferred Share and Epley Limited 8.25%. Jamaican Teas Limited was the volume leader with over 8 million units, followed by Millpack Group Limited with 3.4 million units and Trans Jamaican Highway Limited with over 2 million units. In foreign exchange trading for Wednesday, March 10, the US dollar ended trading at $146.69. The Canadian dollar sold for an average $117.75. The pound sterling traded for $204.29 and the euro ended trading at $178.97. Oil prices fell for a fifth day running on Thursday after official data showed a further increase in U.S. crude and fuel inventories while the ever-present COVID-19 pandemic clouded the prospects for demand recovery. Both contracts are down nearly 3% over the past five days. Brent crude futures fell $0.50 cents to $67.50 a barrel. West Texas intermediate crude futures dropped $0.53 cents to $64.07 a barrel. And on that note, we close this Thursday edition of the Business Report inside the news on PVCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. Pleasant viewing. This week on Culinary Trails, how to get specially prepared meals this Easter. The wine shop was really about wines. So that's how we started. We started at Lady Musgrave where we were importing wines solely for retail purposes. We were importing wine solely for individuals. Um, it reached a point where persons of our persons say, well, you need a location. And then we found a location on South Avenue, which where which that's where we were on South Avenue. We were there for five years, five going six. We were just distributing wines. We used to give samples until persons will stop by the shop and can you just pour two samples in a glass? Can I just have a glass of wine? And then they, they're sit, they will sit there trying to wait on the traffic to die down and they're like, okay, can I just have a bottle? And then the bottle leads to, do you have any food? Do you have any food around the back? Um, it reached to a point where persons were ordering food in. One of my customers suggested that we converted our office into a kitchen. So we converted the office into a kitchen. We were just using a little tabletop stove where we were just doing little knick snacks, like a finger food, something quick and easy. And then eventually our menu grew and then persons became aware of us doing food. We geared everything around um, my boss, who is Turkish. So we geared all the menu items around tapas or meze which they're known for. And then eventually the menu grew just by, you know, giving persons what they request. So if somebody come and say, can I have this? They say, all right, next time you'll get it. And that's how our menu expanded. And our friendship with our customers developed into more family. So we are now family oriented. So anybody who comes to the wine shop is no longer a customer, is now family. So we offer 
personalized services to them. We use only fresh ingredients, we don't use the powder seasoning, so everything is all natural. Um, my boss, who is Turkish, European, you know, they are known for their freshness. So we started by just doing everything from scratch. Everything is fresh, we don't use powder, nothing. We don't use any bottle preservatives, anything. So we maintain the freshness by doing it to order. And in that way, we can customize each dish. So you have a customer who can't take salt, no problem. You have a customer who can't take butter, no problem. And so on and so forth. You have customers who want them, their, their chicken or their lamb to be well done, no problem. It is custom, customizable for each person. And we maintain that as much as possible. That is one of our strong suits. We don't cut any corners. Uh, we normally tell persons that just give us 10 to 15 minutes at most and your meal will be ready. But our specialty on the menu, our most ordered item on the menu is our lamb chops. We use fresh um, garlic, fresh thyme, fresh rosemary, salt and pepper. And you'll be surprised the simplest of ingredients make the tastiest dish. So our extra addition is the lunch. We have a daily lunch menu that changes every day. We try to keep the items every two days to give persons enough time to, you know, order it. But if it's not on the menu, they are always welcome to call us and request it. I always tell them, once I have it, you, can, you shall have it. Once we have the ingredients, it is easy. Because it's a done to order menu or done to order item, we always try to aim to give you what you want. Because we started as a wine shop, we are always about wine. We teach people how to hold a wine glass, how to swirl a wine, how to taste a wine, the difference in terms of grapes. Because some persons don't understand that grapes, our wines differ by the grapes. So a Merlot is the grape, a Chardonnay is the grape. So we teach persons the basics. Um, we teach persons in terms of the medium, medium dry, to the sweet, to the dry. Because there are persons who have never tried wine, so if they try a dry wine, they will automatically think they don't like wine. So we teach them to start with something or a wine that is a medium wine. We don't teach people to start with a sweet wine. Because once the way all your brain works, once you've had something that is sweet, you can't try anything else. So we always start them with a medium bodied wine. So once you start with a medium bodied wine, then you can eventually graduate. Currently we're offering takeout and deliveries until we're open fully to the public. We offer curbside pickup um, delivery. In terms of payment, we do online transfers, we do cards and we do cash. We also offer customized menus for persons that fit their individuality. So currently I have a clientele working with to do a Lent menu that geared around her fasting. So she's currently on a fast, and I will be offering that same menu to other customers. I'll be expanding or putting out that menu for other customers who are interested. So we do stuff like that. So we customize for each person. We are currently open between 12 and seven. Um, until, or once everything is back to normal, we should extend our hours to 11 o'clock. So if you're looking for a dish that has only fresh ingredients, if you're looking for a wine that is only authentic to us or to you, then the wine shop is the place to be. In regional news, the government of Martinique has suspended the use of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine following the lead of France and several other countries after some people who got the jab reportedly developed blood clots. 
Health officials in the French overseas territory says none of those who've been vaccinated in that country have had any serious adverse reactions to the vaccine. However, the decision to temporarily halt the COVID-19 immunization program followed the announcement by French President Emmanuel Macron that his country would stop administering the shot as a precautionary measure. France is awaiting a new assessment by the European Union's medicines regulator, the European Medicines Agency. A decision is expected on Thursday. Chairman of the National Disaster Mitigation Council of St. Kitts Nevis is hoping that parliamentary opposition leader and his team will meet soon with the National COVID-19 Task Force on the issue of vaccinations. St. Kitts and Nevis' opposition leader, Dr. Denzel Douglas, has criticized the government's handling of the vaccination rollout and has indicated his own delay in taking the vaccine. Glenn Bart reports. I am interacting with hundreds of people who are fearful and anxious about the safety of vaccination and demand urgent but reliable answers. But instead of providing the population with helpful answers, Dr. Harris and his administration have acted in bad faith. They openly refused to cooperate. As a member of parliament and as leader of the parliamentary opposition, my conscience would not permit me to secure myself at the expense of my people. And so while I support vaccination as a public health good, I totally reject the politics of divisiveness that Prime Minister Harris is promoting, especially during these emotionally tough and economically difficult times. According to Attorney General Byron, a meeting with Dr. Douglas and his team this week was rescheduled on request of Dr. Douglas to the 23rd March. Appearing on Leadership Matters, Byron was responding to a query on whether the political opposition was doing enough to encourage persons to be vaccinated against COVID-19. We are hoping that they will attend the task force and meet with the task force next week, Tuesday. It's important to understand that when we speak about population immunity, herd immunity, the numbers from the last census would be instructive because at the last census, we had a population of 47,195 individuals. Now, Dr. Wilkerson will tell you that the vaccine will only be administered to those 18 and above. And we have identified the population 18 and above to be about 33,000 to 34,000 individuals, which means that when we want to reach herd immunity, we have to vaccinate 73, well, 33 to 34,000 individuals. In other words, all of the adults in our society, we should be aiming to vaccinate. And so when the Prime Minister speaks about all of society, when Dr. Wilkinson speaks of all of society, we have to have everyone on board. And so we are hoping next week, Tuesday, at the National COVID Task Force, that we involve those who have leadership positions in the opposition to come and to share their views with us and for them to hear the medical fraternity and we can exchange. Because all of us in St. Kitts and Nevis are in this together. According to the Attorney General, it is important that everyone is on board in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Glenn Bart, SKN News. And in sports, we focus on football. West Ham striker Mikhail Antonio has opted to play for Jamaica instead of England, where he was born. This according to UK media reports. Antonio, whose parents are Jamaican, was reportedly approached by the reggae boys last month. Antonio has been picked for England squads but has never been capped as a senior debut. The Jamaica Football Federation is reportedly seeking to recruit up to 15 English players ahead of next year's World Cup in Qatar. And that's our package. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place, for more news and sports right here on PBCJ, the People's Station.